Welcome to 2021. Um, uh, is everyone ready? I mean, come on. Um, this is going to be a great year. I, I just know we've got momentum going and we are going to fly into the new year. I've got a good little uh, uh, series I want to start on the midweek messages. So um, I, I just want you to, to know, watch online, tell other people online, that, that they can receive the messages. They're archived on our website. You can always go back and, and show somebody if you heard a good word, share the message with them. Today's message I want to talk about, it's Jesus saw two boats. Jesus saw two boats. In Luke 5, verse 1, it says, So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake Genesaret, which is the Sea of Galilee, um, and saw two boats. Then he got into one of the boats, and um, uh, Jesus, you know, right there, he sees two boats, he has a decision to make, and he walks straight to the one boat and gets in. Let me back up a second. Let me put this into a little bit of context. In Luke 440, okay, it says, when the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many. Don't miss this Wednesday's message. I'm going to talk about that. How did that happen? I'm going to talk about that this Wednesday. Short little message. Um, it'll be good. But, but here's the deal. Every single one got healed. That's why when he was walking towards the Sea of Galilee to the lake, there was a multitude pressing about, wanting to see, what's he going to do next? What's this Jesus going to do? Let's pray. Father God, that's what we want in 2021. We want to see what are you going to do with the Johannesburg Christian Church? What are you going to do in Joburg? What are you going to do in Lewiston? What are you going to do in the area in Gaylord and, and Spire and all these other towns going towards Atlanta? Father God, I just am excited for 2021. Let's start this off right. This little story here about Jesus and the two boats is a miracle story, and you bring miracles into lives. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So let's go back to Luke 5, verse 1, and let's take this, let's chop this apart. I want to show you guys how great the Bible is. I, it, if you read it in context, it is, there's so much packed into these little stories. And so I'm starting in Luke um, uh, 5, verse 1. It says, So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Genesaret, again, which is Sea of Galilee, and, and we see here that the crowd is pressing in. They're craving. They're hungering. They're thirsting for righteousness. Jesus met the hunger, and Jesus was feeding, their, their, feeding them the word, and that was filling their spirit, and they wanted more, so more people, and they told people, and more people came. They were pressing on him. This is a mob of people is what's going on here. So the first step of a vision is seeing people who need the word. So our first step, is there anybody that you know in our area, in your family, in your friends, in your workplace, is there any in the school, that you know that needs Jesus. There's a lot of people, isn't there? Isn't there a lot of people? And, and in fact, in Luke 10, too, um, I, the word says, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray, therefore, to the Lord of the harvest to send out, to send us out. Pray to the Lord to send you know, I, I mentioned the new college fund um, and last week when I was talking to Lindsay. And this week, um, it, we need to get with Lindsay. You know, we have some seniors in our crowd, uh, Sheldon and Sydney, and, and kids that are doing excellent academically, 
academically. I know there's sports going on, but I'm talking about what's going on in their minds. We have been given a small amount of money to start a college fund, and we want to sow into our kids' futures. We want to sow into Lindsay's future. We want to sow into these kids that are coming up. We have some excellent, awesome kids. And, and I'm telling you, it, it starts with somebody with a heart. And we have a new college fund that we're starting for 2021 and beyond. So just know that. Be praying about that. Let me get back to the word. I'm in verse 2. And it says, and he saw two boats. Jesus saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. In other words, they're done for the day. They're cleaning up. They're cleaning their things up. They're probably, like the Bible says in another place, they were mending their nets and they're cleaning their nets. And that's what they do at the end of the day. Then he got into one of the boats which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. Look at this. Jesus sees an empty boat, and he gets into it. Then he turns to Peter, Simon, and he says, Hey, I need to use your boat for a minute. Can you push out a little bit? These people are, they're, they're, they're thronging me. They're, the multitude was just mobbing him and he had to have some space. Wouldn't we want God to use our boat, um, you know, for Jesus to get into our boat? Don't we want Jesus to get into our boat? To, how about this? He used the boat as a pulpit. That was their church right, right there in the seashore. And, and then he uses it and, and performs miracles within it. The second step to calling men is seizing opportunity of resources. Jesus sees the opportunity of a resource. He saw an empty boat, but he saw fishermen, and he needed both. He needed both of them. And here's the thing, Jesus will use anything that is willing and available. Jesus wants to bring the word of God. He'll use you. He'll use your resources. It might be something small. In this case, and I'll talk about it in a minute, that boat actually wasn't small. It, it was a decent-sized little boat based on how the fishing boats were in the history back then. But anyway, let's go to verse 4. It says, When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now Jesus says, okay, first he says, you know, push the boat out from the shore a little bit so I can um, uh, speak to the people without them coming into the water. Then he says, launch out. Let's launch this thing out. Let's go catch some fish. Now they were already cleaning up. Do you remember the verse before? They were um, cleaning their nets. They were done for the day. And, and Jesus is saying, launch out? You know, Jesus, sometimes you might think you're done. You might think you're too old. You might think you're too this or too that. Jesus wants to launch you out. Watch this. Jesus asked Peter, launch out. Jesus wanted to preach and teach to the people. He wanted to give them the Bible. He wanted to give them the word. Now Jesus wants to catch fish in the boat. In the one boat he chose. Watch this. Verse 5. But Simon, now remember, Simon's a skilled fisherman. Okay? But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. You see that? He's, he's making excuses to Jesus. We've been out here all night. We've worked hard to try and catch fish, and, and now you want, and we didn't catch anything. He's exhausted. He worked all night, and he's disappointed. He caught nothing. And then Jesus says to him, look at this. The third step to calling people is removing a reluctant obedience. Jesus decided to win Peter's loyalty. Peter was reluctant to obey Jesus. Have we been reluctant to obey Jesus at times? Sure we have. 
Sure we have. We don't understand some things Jesus tells us to do. But he worked all night. He was exhausted. Peter was disappointed. He caught zero fish. And then, um, uh, you know, he caught himself. All of a sudden, Peter catches himself. He got pricked by in the heart. He got convicted what he was saying. It went to his from his heart to conscience, and, and all of a sudden he had to follow his heart, not his mind. We have to follow our heart sometimes, not his mind. Because look at this. If you follow the mind, then you're thinking there was no fish. You're th overthinking. And by experience, he experienced that, that he had already tried and he failed. And then his body, he was tired. He was incapable of going on. We need the spirit that is willing for God. We need to have a willing spirit for God no matter what. And Peter, thankfully, switched. He, he, he obeyed. And verse 6 says, And when they had done this, they caught a great... Once he obeyed, look what happened. They caught a great number of fish, and it was so great that the Bible says their net was breaking. Their net was breaking. I want to have a fish story like that. Just so great of a story that, that the catch was so great and that, that our nets were breaking. The house of God is just bursting because the people coming in, it's just amazing. I want to have a Jesus story, a fish story. Have God use my boat and, and to amaze the people around. We need Johannesburg Christian Church to be the amazing story, the great fish story for God. What's your God story? How is God going to use you and yours and your family? How is God using you right now? The smallest little thing. Be obedient. Be willing. And watch in great amazement what Jesus does. Look at this. Verse 7. It says, so they signaled to their partners. Remember, John and James were partners with Simon. So they had a boat too. There was two boats. Now they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. Do you have some partners? Do you have some people that you can call on that you could say, hey, come and help me? You know, they needed some help. And they came and filled both boats. They filled both boats so that they began to sink. Now this is another amazing thing. Do you remember when Jesus was in the storm with the 12? There was 12 in the boat. That's how big the boat was. Fishing boats back then were made the same size. All the fishermen had the same size boats. The boats were 10 feet wide and 30, around 30 feet long. That's a decent-sized boat. Now, here's the thing. My Bible says, and filled both boats. That is a lot of fish. They filled them so much that they began to sink. So the fourth step is to call men to, in demonstrating God's power, God's godly power. You know, calling men is demonstrating godly power. Peter's obedience produced results, and they were amazing. It wasn't a normal catch. It was much, much more. There was no question that Jesus caused the, the miracle because Peter couldn't catch anything, and John and James didn't catch anything. They, they were disappointed, remember? They were exhausted. The purpose of Jesus is to win our loyalty and willingness Imagine Peter mumbling and grumbling in his mind. Have you ever mumbled and grumbled in your mind where it's like, oh, come on, you you got to be kidding me. How, how in the world is this? What, what good will it do? How many times have you did that? You moaned and groaned and complained and mumbled and grumbled. A carpenter, here's where it gets funny. A carpenter tells a professional, skilled fisherman, launch out. Launch your boat. Cast your nets. Cast the nets down. He's telling skilled fishermen how to fish. And, and look at this. And all of a sudden, a catch so great, he was really going to have to. No, here's the funniest thing. Peter's exhausted. 
Peter's tired. They're cleaning those nets. Now the nets are dirty. They're going to need to be cleaned again for a good cause, for a good cause. And it was not just net, it was nets. That was plural. And look at this. Now Peter really has to work. And, and the net broke. He had to call on the other boat and the other crew to help. Both boats were filled to capacity. And to top it off, they began to sink. Jesus, was he just sitting over there chuckling? Was he smiling? Was he happy and rejoicing? You know he was. You know he was. Knowing Peter was going to, watch this, be humbled he was going to be humbled because now he has to work even longer and he has to work even harder. But it's a good work because a miracle just took place. Look at this. Here, you got two overheaping boats full of fish. When you catch fish, what do you have to do with them? You have to scale them. You have to clean them. All of them fish now needed cleaned and scaled. And Jesus is just looking at Peter. Yes, sir, that's what you have to do. And, and, and so I, I, I just wish I could be there. I just wish I was there. Jesus had his man. He had Peter's loyalty now. He, Peter had to know that was an absolute miracle, even no matter how exhausted he was, no matter how exhausted you get with your family, no matter how hard it might be at work, no matter what, Jesus is going to be there for you and he's going to perform a miracle as long as you are willing and obedient. Verse 9, no, let me go to verse 8. It says, when Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Catch that. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. Verse 9, for he and all who were with him were astonished. They were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. The fifth step to calling men is stirring deep confession. He had to confess his sin of disobedience and unbelief. We have to sometimes say, man, we've been disobedient in this area. Man, I didn't believe. I didn't have faith. I didn't believe. You know, we have to confess that. But here's the big confession. He confessed him, Jesus, to be his Lord. It took steps. It's one step at a time sometimes. But do you remember back? He had previously called in verse 5. He called Jesus his master. He, master meaning you have a little bit of authority. You have some authority. Okay, so with that authority, but he learned better. He was astonished at what just happened. Now he understands this. Jesus is truly the Lord, and he confessed him as Lord. He was converted that day. He was saved that day. There's a day we have to be converted. There's a day we have to be saved. There's a day we came to Jesus and said, Jesus, you are Lord, not just some man written in a book, not some guy that, that did a few things. No, no, you weren't just a teacher. You weren't just a prophet. You are Lord, Jesus. And Peter found that out. He shows Peter who was not yet saved. You have some family members. You have some people around you. You have some friends that are not yet saved. Just know Peter was not yet converted. Even though he had been around Jesus, he had been, Jesus was already at his house and healed his mother-in-law. Jesus had been performing miracles and Peter saw this but he was still just his master. He wasn't Lord yet. Now he is. But now he called Jesus Lord. He is Lord who is holy and convicting, who must be obeyed and followed. Jesus must be followed. He was to be feared in a reverent awe for the Lord. He's Lord Jesus. He's our Savior. Verse 10, it says, and so also were James and John. So also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. The sixth challenge 
to men is discipleship. We have to disciple the next person. We have to go win more men. Jesus said, from now on, you will catch men, not just fish, to catch other men for Jesus, with Jesus. Verse 11 says, so when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Look at what these guys do. I've been there. My wife will tell you, I have forsook a lot of things to follow Jesus. So I know the feeling. I know the feeling. Back, in fact, John said, um, he said, if anyone serves me, Jesus is talking back in John 12. If, if Jesus says, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father will honor. If we serve and follow Jesus, there's people that we need to win to the Lord and serve Jesus by helping them come in, bring them to church, show them the online messages, get them somehow, read with them in the Bible, invite them to the men's Bible study, invite them to the women's Bible study, invite the kids to the youth, um, invite the children to come on Sunday mornings. Here it is, the seventh response immediately. They respond immediately. A, the challenge is to respond immediately. They forsake all and they follow Jesus. No, they forsook their fishing business. They gave up their boats. Their boats. They forsook all, all to follow Jesus. Jesus doesn't want you to give up all your stuff. He wants you all your heart. He just wants your heart. He'll let you decide when you don't need this or you want to use this for Jesus or you want to give that to somebody to bless them or you want to do this with your resources. He knows you have resources. He doesn't need your resources. He has it all. He can turn in a boat, a fishing boat from empty zero to overheaping to the point where you call the second boat and it's overheaping and so full they start sinking. Jesus owns it all. He created the water. He created the fish. He created us. He doesn't need your stuff. He needs you and he needs your heart. Let's just serve him and follow him. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus, that we want to follow you. We want to serve you with all our hearts, all our soul, all our strength, all our minds. Father, we just want to show us who to help. Show us which person you want us to talk to. Show us what scriptures to read. Speak to us through your word. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. So my question to you, you decide, do you want Jesus to use your boat? Do you want Jesus to get into your boat? Pray about that all week. Pray about that. Have a great week. Jesus' name.